to worship one and all on this uh, very special weekend when we are recording the whole service for you. Hopefully it will make for a little more ease in navigating your way through it by simply clicking the, the one button which indicates that uh, we are going to go from beginning to end with the service as it is recorded in the bulletin. If you would like to have printed out a copy of the bulletin, then you can do that if you have a printer, and you can follow along and join in on the hymns and other things, but if not, simply uh, just enjoy the service, and we bow our hearts and our minds together to address the one who is our living God, our hopeful God, our always, always present God. We thank uh, our organist, Jim Walton, for his prelude today, and uh, we want you to know, as I have said almost every Sunday, be aware that we are longing for the day when we'll be able to have in-person worship. A committee is working hard on that, and you will be finding out uh, soon enough what precautions we're taking so that when it seems right to you, you may come and join us here in the building for in-person worship. Let's join together in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves, 
and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed by your grace. Forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus our Lord, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace, and our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join uh, now on the gathering hymn. We're going to sing the first two verses of Lord Whose Love in Humble Service. taken from Isaiah chapter 55. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Delight in yourself, in which rich food, decline your ear and incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the people, the leader and commander for all the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know. See, you shall... Receive nations that do not know you, and they shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Uh, 
145th Psalm. Our Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all and your compassion is over all the earth. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. The Psalm reading. The second reading is from Romans, the ninth chapter. I am speaking the truth of Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people. My kindred, according to the flesh, they are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Word of God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning with chapter 14. Glory to you, O God. Now when Joseph heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over, a thousand men, five thousand men besides women and children, and there were twelve baskets full left over. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now may the words of my heart and the meditation of our souls be found acceptable God's sight, for he is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, it is early August. The year is more than half over, and what a year it has been. Some will be glad to see it go. Even this morning, I read a new tropical storm, I believe it's pronounced Isaias, Isaias, is headed our way. Not a hurricane, not this year, not now. 2020, the year that shall forever live in infamy. Black lives matter, all lives matter. Everything points to more and more divisiveness. 
mask wearers versus non-mask wearers. This too has become grounds for a fight. Old people feel that the younger crowd is being careless and unconcerned for them with a callous attitude about virus transmission. For some reason, one of my most recent laments about the year 2020 is the lack of baseball. When the teams have been told that their season has been significantly downsized and now least the Miami Marlins and some other baseball teams playing season has been indefinitely postponed again due to the virus. Major League Sports have become about the only thing left that we can still talk about and that can bring people of all different stripes together. Black Americans, white Americans have their favorite teams. It is a safe thing to talk about at family dinners. You're not going to get anyone all that angry at you. I'm a fan of the Minnesota Yankees and the Minnesota Vikings, but I'll talk to you about your favorite team. We don't have to fight about it. We sure cannot talk about politics or religion as it will definitely demonstrate our deep divisions. There are never Trumpers and Trump there are white evangelicals in their mega churches who shun wearing masks, trusting that prayers and God's blessing will somehow keep them safe. So if the old forbidden subjects, politics, religion, are still off the table in this election year, in this pandemic year of 2020, then we can at least talk about sports. I'm thinking about the old folks in the retirement centers playing sports on TV. It's often brought them much joy. I have family members who are avid Yankee fans. The one thing that most everyone could look forward to was sports. Baseball, football, basketball, hockey. Harmless and sometimes exciting fun with few negative consequences. But it may not be happening this year. Everyone has their 2020 story. Your story and your family's story may seem like it's worse or better than someone else's, but no one is immune this year from having a lament to share. Haven't seen my grandkids. I can't hear what people are saying through their masks. Our laments are real to us. Each one has to find a way to balance all of this bad with our deep down hopes and dreams. Where do we find the bread of life that will sustain and will carry us through even this year? In our darkest moments, we can feel that there is, for each of us, a deserted place where darkness seems to abound. So if you wanna talk about being in a bad place, a deserted place, allow me to turn to the gospel for today, Jesus, has just heard of the death of a dear friend. News of the death of John the Baptizer, Jesus' earthly cousin. This news had just reached him, and he must feel like many have felt in these past months, when over 150,000 people have died across our nation. Someone's mother or father neighbor or friend has died. You can tell their story because these people matter to us. Their living or dying cuts through our hearts as we hear about that death. Jesus had heard about his cousin John and his aunt Elizabeth. It was John who even before his birth had jumped for joy in Elizabeth's womb, when Mary, the mother of our Lord, and Elizabeth met during the pregnancies that they both shared. Cousin John was dead. Because of political maneuvering, a bloody death at the hands of crooked rulers who cared nothing about this man, we have come to call him the Baptist, 
due to his preaching about humankind's need to return to their faith and their God. John was just one more expendable human being who got in power's way, and he was killed. With this death weighing on his heart, our Lord goes away. His leaving, however, did not find him the comfort that he desired. Crowds of people with their own sad stories and many more stories just like this brought to them to find Jesus and to seek help. Will you help my dying daughter? Will you heal my blindness? Will you help me with my pain and loss? Will you, Jesus? Please, please, will you? And so it went on, all that day and into the night. And as night fell, the great crowd continues to mull around looking for help. And another problem then arises. They were growing mighty hungry. Send them home, the disciple says. They're growing restless, and the stomachs are growling. What shall we do here? It's deserted. We have nothing to give them. Floundering, lost, and hungry people, 5,000 and more of them, they were suffering from their own pandemic, first century style. So many problems, so little time, so much going wrong, and so few answers. Painting a rosy picture of the problem isn't going to solve it. You'll be fine, the disciples may have said. Just hurry on home and get something you need. The hunger will soon disappear. It will go from 15 hungry people down to 10, and then soon no one will be hungry again. But Jesus knew that simple optimism would not do. Sending on their way was not the answer. It may have solved the problem for a brief time, but Jesus picked another way. He said to his disciples, you give them something to eat. But they said, no can do. We have only five little loaves of bread and two scrawny fish. And Jesus said, it is enough. And a strange and wondrous story unfolds at that point. 5,000 plus moms and kids were fed that day. And when they were all stuffed and could hold no more, there were exactly 12 baskets left over of bread and fish. Wow, do you believe that God can work a miracle out of the wilderness and the lost condition of our present pandemic? 2020 year. Be careful how you answer, because it is a matter of life and death. Can Jesus work a miracle? Out of so little, so much. Out of hunger, he created fullness. From the tiniest morsels, a few loaves, and a couple of tilapia, he brought them to hope. How you answer the question about this miracle depends on your own faith, but also your own outlook on the world around you. What do you see around you? Only how bad things are in 2020? Only the many changes and losses and confusion that we've all been asked to endure? I'm praying for a miracle. I don't mean a vaccine alone. I don't mean a cure for some at the expense of others. I mean a miracle of abundance and prosperity that comes when God's people step forth in faith and proclaim a new day. 2020 is not the year of despair alone, but the year when we grew strong in our resolve. This is not the year of the pandemic alone, but the year when each of us found greater resolve to move on and to trust in the miracle of Jesus feeding us and the world around us. Back in the 70s, a folk music artist named Ewald Bash pens these words, where shall we find bread? In the wilderness, they said. Where shall we find bread before we die? Well, there is bread in the wilderness and plenty to spare. Bread 
in the wilderness and plenty to spare. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now we are to teach it to our children, to our neighbors, to our friends. We are a beacon that is set on a hill. Faith Lutheran must live up to our destiny. We're the ones who believe in the miracle of bread in the wilderness. We are the church that welcomes the hungry without question. We invite the old and the young, the discouraged and the upbeat. We offer an open door to black Americans and white Americans and all other ethnic and diverse individuals who drive past right out here on Beneva Road, drive past this building and wonder, what are they all about? We welcome the gay and the straight, the Democrats and the Republicans. We will be the ones that ask ourselves, how is our miracle going? Is there bread enough and plenty left over? Every day is a new miracle for those who live through these perilous times and still keep our hope in Jesus who called himself the bread he has asked us to create a culture of possibilities rather than inadequacy. Eyes are on us. The world is waiting and the young are waiting. What, you, what are you made of, Faith Lutheran Church of Sarasota, Florida? Let us strive to recall these words and be the miraculous influence in our day-to-day -day life on those around us, both young and old. The following words were written in 1954 and slightly paraphrased from a parent educator, family counselor named Dorothy Nolte. And they can teach us how important our own miracle lives are to so very many who are watching us. We can and we will move from a mindset of deficiency to one of sufficiency by providing a counter-narrative we will see in ourselves by the miracle of God, a worthiness, a compassion, and a connection to all who hunger and thirst. Listen to Dr. Nolke's words. If we live with criticism, we learn to condemn. If we live with hostility, we learn to fight. If we live with fear, we learn to be apprehensive. If we live with pity, we learn to feel sorry for ourselves. If we live with ridicule, we learn to feel shy. If we live with jealousy, we learn to feel envy. If we live with shame, we learn to feel guilt. But if we live with encouragement, we learn confidence. If we live with tolerance, we learn patience. If we live with praise, we learn appreciation. If we live with acceptance, we learn to love. If we live with approval, we learn to love ourselves. If we live with recognition, we learn it is good to have a goal. If we learn live with sharing, then we can learn that beautiful gift of generosity. If we live with honesty, we learn truthfulness. If we live with fairness, we learn justice. If we live with kindness and consideration, we learn respect for all people. If we live with security, we learn to have faith in ourselves and in those around us. If we live with friendliness, we learn that the world can be place in which to live. These words, though written for children, these are words I believe are for all of us, trying to make our way and trust that God is working his miracle in us. Let us pray. Thank you, blessed Savior, for the promise that we will be your miracle in this place. There is bread in the world plenty to spare. We are called to share the bread, the bread of our Savior Jesus, the bread of life, the bread
bread of hope, bread of encouragement. Help us to share with confidence in our hearts that we too can make a great difference in this year, 2020. Amen. Let us sing together our next hymn, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. And I want you to especially notice that at the end of the refrain, which we sing twice, are the words, loaves abound, loaves abound. Be sure to listen to that. I think it so beautifully reflects on this morning's miracle story. <laughs> God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that which you bless and ask us to share with the world abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and the life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we've caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies, provide needed rains in places of drought, and protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
you offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering, and please satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, and soul, and mind. Especially Susan, Jeff and Nancy, Linda, Misty, Bert, Cheryl, Colleen, Elizabeth, Dorothy, Carla, Hannah, Lee, Joyce, Paul and Debbie, Catherine, John, McKinley, Sue, Peter, Dick, John, Craig, Colette, Nancy, and Anita, and John. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer freely the full of salvation. Give our congregation, Faith Lutheran, such a welcoming heart that our words and the actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known, especially Cherry Meeks of our own congregation who passed this last week, but also St. Dominic, who in the year 1221 established the Order of the Preachers, the Dominicans, for his work in ancient times to bring the word to all people to give him thanks. In the sure and certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours faithfulness is as firm as the heavens, water and word, wine and bread. These are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts, that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world, through Jesus Christ, our strength. Thanksgiving for the word. Let us continue to pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word, O life, O Christ, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor power nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus God the Creator Jesus the Christ and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love in the name of the Father and of the Son Spirit. Amen. We join together in our closing hymn, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness, verses 1 and 2. 